If you're seeing this video, then I believe it is time for you to really step into the highest vibrational version of you. And I believe that at the end of this video, you'll be so convinced that it's time that you do that and you'll have the exact tools and techniques that you can apply in your life to do so that when you look back six months or a year from now, you'll see that this is the video that planted the seed for your transformation. On this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you the seven most powerful ways I've gone about becoming the most high vibrational version of myself permanently and how you can stay in what is quote, called quote high vibration. And over the last like six months especially, my life has transformed a lot. I have moved from Sedona to Austin, Texas. I moved into this house, which I purchased. I am now gonna be Airbnb in this house. I'm moving into a different house that's more in nature in Austin, Texas as well. And I'm moving into a new phase of my life of doing live events and really branching outside of the comfortable zone that has been me for the last three years that I've been making YouTube videos. And I'm using the same techniques that I used back in 2017 to go full-time on YouTube to become that higher vibrational version of me. I'm using the same techniques then to now recreate myself to be this higher vibrational version of me. That it's like an identity shift that changes my whole entire life. And I've seen thousands of people go through their own shifts in the way they view themselves. And there's certain patterns that I've recognized that change just about everything. Now, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna kinda of share a little bit about vibration in general. I know it's this esoteric woo-woo term, but think of vibration as a combination of how you think, feel, and act. So think, feel, and act is the ingredients that go into your vibration. Now, you'll notice that your vibration right meow is that of you thinking, feeling, and acting to the reality you are currently in. So think about it, if you are working a nine to five job, you're probably thinking thoughts that are equal to that nine to five job, even if you don't like it. I used to go to work every day and I would complain to other coworkers about how slow it was because I worked in a sales job at Barney's New York and Women's Shoes and it was no hardly customers coming in, especially towards the last like two years. So my thoughts were equal to that. I would feel resistant or I wouldn't feel very passionate about it and I was only taking action. I wasn't making YouTube videos. I'm not a YouTuber, I'm just a nine to five job goer. My thoughts, my feelings, and my actions were equal to that version of me. Well, for me to bridge permanently into a new version of me, I had to have a new sense of who I am. So I then had to look at and be honest with myself. I am thinking, acting, and feeling equal to this reality, and this reality is not what I want, but it is comfortable and it is safe. So then what I did is I started to see and look at the vision. There's a quote that I saw in a movie recently. It's a Marvel movie that I saw with my friend and his kids called Cheng Li or something. And there's a quote in there that one of this archery master shares with like this one character and says, if you aim at nothing, you will get nothing. And it's very true. If you're just, there's no goal and you are just thinking, feeling and acting equal to the reality you're in and you don't have a vision or a new uh, model for what you could be, then it's kind of like that stays very comfortable. So what I did is I became aware and I said, wait, I'm thinking, feeling, and acting equal to this nine to five reality. What about me being a full-time YouTuber? And literally what I did, this is gonna sound esoteric and weird, but I connected to a version of me, maybe even a parallel reality version of me or my higher self, I don't even know to this day, but I got this clear message, make daily videos on YouTube. You know you wanna be a YouTuber, make daily videos. Treat YouTube like you're full-time and it will become your full-time. That would require me to be a new version of myself, to let go of the old version of the nine to five job goer who think thoughts equal to that nine to five job, felt emotions equal to it and took action equal to it, to start to take action, think, and to feel in a new way. And once I started and I made the bridge, what I did is I made the choice, this is who I am right now. And when I did that, guess what ended up happening? My life changed in a very powerful way way. I committed to the daily videos. It wasn't always easy at first. Many of you know the story because it's so repetitive because he talks about the same thing in every YouTube video, but guess what? That's what we got here. 2,000 videos. What you want me to do, okay? I've shared a new story sometimes too, I promise. But this is the key that I have really realized is what you want to do and the first thing 
to raising your vibration permanently is understanding your vibration, but secondly, or not secondly, it's still the first one. It's expanding your sense of identity. It's expanding your sense of self. Who are you? If you have something that you're afraid to do, then a lot of times by doing that thing, you begin to rewire yourself. Recently, I had a vulnerable conversation with a friend of mine. And I was afraid to have this conversation for a long time. It actually made our relationship suffer for since like nine months because we we're afraid to have this conversation. I had this conversation and I was brutally honest. I wasn't sugarcoating shit. I expressed how I felt. And it was one of the most empowering experiences of my life. It made me feel and realize that I can just be me. I don't have to be a people pleaser. I can authentically share who I am. And you wanna know something funny? The person I express this to, I can tell they respect me more because I'm not just a yes man. Someone I really look up to and even now, great friend, someone's very successful. And But I'm realizing, and what I realized is that I was being inauthentic and fake in order to not go into tension or express how I really feel. After I had this and I went into this unknown territory, I've re-identified who I am. I'm no longer the guy that just says things and is nice to get people's validation. I'm like authentic, vulnerable, and I go into the tension. And it's a different mentality, but I felt I feel so empowered. The other thing is I have a friend that was here in Austin doing a live four-day live event, and he invited me to it, and he invited me to speak too. And when he did, I remember feeling a little bit of anxiety. Like, ooh, this is the next level of my business and everything, over 100 people live. Ooh, but there's an excitement there. And that excitement and that stepping into the new really moved energy. So it was a sign to me that that's what I want to be doing and that's what I'm going to be doing. And then I went to this event and the cool thing is synchronistically going to this event, I was able to see that it's way more simpler than I thought. I think the thing that held me back was like, I didn't know exactly uh, who do I hire? How do I do this? How do I do that? How many hundreds of people? What if this happens? What if that happens? But I realized, you, dude, you have most of the answers and you, the whole time I was at his event, all I wanted to do was get on stage. I was like, man, I just feel like I need to be up there. I was like, uh, uh, I'm about to explode or something. Because I knew that's what I wanted to do. And uh, that is what you want to do to change your vibration permanently is jump into the unknown. And the known is how you think, felt, and act for so long and it's comfortable. And the unknown, oh, oh, it's just new, this is uncomfortable. But then you redefine yourself. When I started making daily videos, all of a sudden I realized, OMG, I am this new version of myself. This is kind of a, I care what people think. And as you jump into and you start to expand your sense of self, you start to do new things, there's blocks that are gonna come up. It's never going to be like you step into the unknown and you're like, okay, before I step into the unknown, I'm gonna remove all these blocks and then I'm just gonna be ready. Like if I just edit my videos, if I just have full editing capabilities and then I understand everything I'm ever gonna talk about in YouTube videos and then also I just really learn how not to care what people think, then I'll be ready to make YouTube videos. And guess what? I waited for like four years because I was waiting for that. And then eventually I said, screw it. And I made the choice to be that version of me. You remove the blocks as you go through them, not as you wade around thinking better thoughts. That's what I did. I was thinking better thoughts. Remember thinking, feeling, and acting. Thinking, feeling, and acting, not just thinking. Many people say, I'm thinking, I'm thinking better thoughts. I'm thinking better thoughts, Aaron, but it's not happening. Well, action is one of the languages of our physical reality. Many of you may be spiritual starseed snowflakes, like we all are, but at a certain level to where in the higher dimensions, you think it, it's there. It's like Ariana Grande's, I want it, I got it. You're like, I think it, I got it. I think it, I got it. But now in physical reality, we have to take action. And you're over there like, I just think a better thought. In the fifth dimension, this is what I do. I think a better thought and it comes. It's not coming. It's like, bro, you incarnated into a 3D reality system where you might have to take a little bit of action. But here's the thing, you're not taking the action because it's gonna get you the girlfriend or the boyfriend. You're not taking the action because it's gonna get you the quadrillion dollars. You're taking action because it's who you are. It's what you enjoy. I'm making this video right now. I'm actually kind of enjoying it. I enjoy it because it's my passion. It's what I love doing. So that's the first one. It's probably one of the most powerful too. You make the identity shift when you become aware of your old vibe and then you start being the new vibe and you decide who you are and it changes everything. The second thing, is something I had to learn, and guess what? It sucked learning it because of the people pleaser thing I was telling you earlier. One of the ways that you're gonna raise your vibration permanently, because a permanent shift in vibration 
It's you've now chosen who you are. You are now different than you used to be. Now the version of you, like if I imagine the version of me, like even now, I have somebody that reached out to me on Instagram. That's like a, somebody I used to know back in Vegas. And he's like, Hey bro, I need to pick your brain. I need to, I need you to teach me like how to do what you've done on YouTube and blah, 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 blah. And he wants me to like, I don't probably jump on a call with him or something. Now, um, this is going to sound cocky, but the busier I've gotten, the more successful I've gotten, the more time, the more time has become, uh, like a really good commodity to where I can't jump. Like, am I going to jump on the call with somebody that I knew in Vegas or am I going to jump on the call with my mom who just texted me and said, Hey honey, call me. Who am I going to, who am I going to call? Ghostbusters. No, I'm going to call that of my madre. So it's like, as I become more successful even, and as I've gotten more on my vision, I've had to say no to more things. Now, part of me would be like, oh, he's going to, I'm going to say no. And he's going to think I'm cocky or I'm an asshole or something. And uh, I don't care what people think. And then I realized, no, I'm also not good. Like it's, it's the awareness. Like if I have a friend that is just at a, at a level to where I know they are crazy busy out of the awareness of my own like stuff going on, I just know. And I don't take it personally if he's like, I'm too busy. You know what I mean? But there's this fear there, but as the more successful I've become and for you to even become successful and to become the highest vibrational version of you, you're going to have to learn to say no, you're going to have to learn how to say no. And no is saying yes to something else. By me saying no to this guy that I used to know in Vegas, who's still a cool guy and everything, but I'm also saying yes to my mom's phone call because I can call my mom. I'm also saying yes to making a video that could influence thousands of people. It's, it's me being aware of my own energy. And once you start raising your vibration, you're going to become a little bit more protective of your energy or a lot, not in the way that I have to protect my energy because there's a fifth dimensional arc, all this crazy stuff. No, you're going to become more aware of your energy because it becomes more valuable because you're putting it towards things that actually are high vibrational. What is high vibrational? Your passion, what you love doing. You are following your excitement. So this is something I had to do when I started making YouTube videos too, because I had friends that wanted to hang out and I had to say, no, now that I have a vision, if I hang out with you, I'm not going to get a video out tomorrow on YouTube because I've committed to daily videos on YouTube. And that's really what changed my life was when I committed to daily videos on YouTube, I was being a new version of me. So the reason I'm sharing this with you is because even now, like I was at, I was at my buddy's event the other day, didn't realize there gonna be a lot of subscribers there or at least 15, 20 subscribers that were coming up to me after the event. They're like, Hey, Aaron, I love your videos, blah, blah, blah. And then there was one person that came up that was like, Hey, Aaron, uh, he's really cool. I'm not, I'm not trying to make fun of him. So if you're watching this, I'm not making fun of you, but somebody comes up. It, it's always interesting because people sometimes I think are in their own bubbles and they're not thinking about the, the person that they're talking to and like maybe their life and like what they have going on. But he's like, Hey, Aaron, I would love to, I love to, to, to take you out. I'd love for you to come to my city. I would love to take you on a lunch and, and tell you all about my life and, and all of this stuff. Let's hang out. Let me get your phone number. And I'm like thinking to myself, like the, the challenge for me is as I become more successful, I have more boundaries. I have my challenge is talking to my family and my current friends and staying on top of what I'm doing. So to bring somebody else and you know, in and, and then commit or have somebody else on my phone that's texting me, it is something that I have to have boundaries with. And as well, it's also the realization that I need to like, it was an interesting thing because I was in a group of like five people and they were all people that recognized me for my video. So what I get my phone, just going to pass it around and let everyone put in their information or something like that. You know what I mean? I had to be honest. What was the most authentic thing for me to do to say, no, sorry, I don't do that. I'm going to be doing a live event soon. You can come to the live event. I would love to connect that way but I don't have time to do that. I've got other things going on. So the thing that I'm having to learn is saying no can be hard, but what I realized is, uh, I have to be not afraid to do that in a nice way, of course, but by saying no to that, I'm saying yes to like what I can actually focus on and stuff. So it's a different way of, of looking at things, but realize, I know for many of you, it might be hard to say no to friends that want to hang out. Even if you have a story that you've been with these friends for like such a long time and just the way things work, but realize the more you say no, you're saying yes to something else. So that's the stick about that. So say no and you'll be saying yes to other things. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about is when we talk about 
the old vibration of how you think, feel, and act, and the new vibration of this new version of you, it's not so much about just wiring in this new version of you. It's mainly about letting go of the payoffs of this old version of you. Now, what are payoffs? Anything we do, we do because of the payoff that comes that we get from it. So if I'm working that nine to five job thinking, feeling, and acting equal to it, it may be reaffirming the payoff I get is maybe a sense of being right. The right could be like, yes, I'm working this job I hate. Um, I could be doing something else, but I'm not. It also probably feels safe. So the payoff I get is it feels safe. And if it feels safe, then it's like, you know, I don't have to step out of my comfort zone. And some people are even addicted to like being angry. They're like angry with where they are, but it's like, why don't you change it? I have this friend that used to always come to my house, um, not always, but every now and then I would hang out with him, a real good friend of mine I used to grow up with, and he would always be bitching about his job, working at the hotels and all this corporate BS, and this person did this to him, and this person did this to them. And after like 30 minutes of bitching, I'm like, dude, why are you working there? Well, it's the only way I know to make money or whatever. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, dude, you hate it. It's like draining your energy. Like, get, like, quit and find something else. Find something you're passionate about. You used to be passionate about the shirt line. Why don't you go do that or this or that? And I empowered him and he left, Phil. So we were excited, but then it kind of wore off because maybe there's an addiction there to the old comfortable feeling, the old comfortability. I think some people are addicted to certain substances because of the comfort it brings them. Not everybody, but I used to smoke a lot of cannabis. Not everybody that smokes cannabis does it for this reason, but I was numbing a lot of my own pain. And I think I just got, I knew that when I, when I, Smoked it, I would just feel very calm and relaxed. And it was certainty that I got from that, very comfortable. But guess what? I think the reason, you know, it's normally associated, there's some people that can smoke and do all this business stuff, but for me, when I stopped, I, I got all this energy back and I, I became like this new version of me, so I stopped being just in that comfortable zone. So letting go, how do you let go? You become aware of the reasons you have. You become aware of the payoffs. And then you'd simply say, I'm gonna let those go. It's that simple. It's like, no, don't I have to like write a letter and burn it and then like put it somewhere and then like meditate on it and then like do some Kundalini thing where I squeeze my taint? No, you don't have to do any of that. <laughs> you don't have to do any of that, bro. Just become aware. Awareness is 90% of transformation and then let go. And as you let go, you're gonna be taking your power back and it's going to feel amazing. Now the fourth thing, all right, the fourth thing is very, very important. It's probably one of the biggest transformations you'll make from the old vibrational you to the new vibrational you. And I had to do this, and this is gonna sound kind of cringy to hear for some of you, but because I, I know anytime I post it on Instagram, it gets a little bit of a, it kind of is polarizing, but there's two different kind of, kinds of consciousness. There's one where there's a victim consciousness where things happen to me, and there's another one where things are happening for me or I can like find a way through this. Now, victim consciousness is something that many of us can be addicted to, and I was for years. Not even, like, even just recently, I realized that I many times will do whatever I can to remain a victim in certain situations. I had to, I told this story on a podcast recently, but I had this guy that uh, works, or that was working on my house, a contractor, and I had this thing where he, I, get, I overpaid him, I paid him up front, and then he freaking disappeared, getting t like 17K, disappears, Need him to get stuff done. He's supposed to get it done within a month. Three months later, still doesn't have it done. I'm like, dude, I need that money back because I'm selling my house now in Sedona. And then he didn't want to get, he like spent the money, didn't have it to give back. And he's like, let me just do the work now. I'm like, no, you had your chance. And it became this long headache. And I realized that I have these things happen sometimes in certain situations and I like get so alive from getting angry and, and I'm right about being a victim. But like, why am I fighting to be a victim? I had to take responsibility and realize I allowed that to happen. I paid the dude 17K before the work was done and he disappeared to go work on someone else's house or many people's houses. It was my fault. I had to take ownership. Once I, once I realized it was my fault, it was so much easier for me, not in a shame, like I'm so bad, I'm such a, I'm such a naughty boy, but it was more so like I was then aware I, I can choose not to do that next time and I learned from it. And eventually I got some of that money back that he owed me, but of course uh, it, it, be, it did become a headache, but I'm no longer fighting to be the victim. And um, I was a victim from seven to 15 years old with the whole ex-stepmom thing. And then after my ex-stepmom left when I was 15, my dad divorced her, I kept finding women in my life, either a girlfriend or a manager, that would control me the way my ex-stepmom did because I was addicted to the comfortability of being a victim. But victim consciousness means that you take responsibility. The funny thing was, is recently I was on a plane 
and I saw this guy on the plane. I was going from uh, Phoenix to Sedona, San Diego, which is a guy named Jocko Willick or something like that. I recognize him because I've seen him on interviews and stuff. And he, he's like this, this kind of like this hardcore like marine guy or something like that. And uh, he talks about leadership and he has a book on leadership. So it was funny. I was on the plane. I was like, I never really indulged in his content because he always seemed kind of like intense. But I, on the plane, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to freaking get this book. So I got this book and I, it's um, this leadership book called like Extreme Ownership. And one of the main parts of it is as, as a leader, you take complete ownership for that of whatever you are whatever you are doing or whatever that responsibility is. And as you take that responsibility, what you find is that then you're no longer the victim because it's always your fault. Not your fault in a shameful way, but it's your fault in the way that you chose it. If you treat every situation as if you chose it, you will have more power. And that's one of the main things around this concept that's changed my life is I'm no longer the victim. Even those business transactions or whatever it is, you have to switch from victim consciousness into like things happen for me. They're just beliefs too. Now that's the fourth thing. Now the fifth thing is the next two things are beliefs. They're stories that hold us in low vibration. Now one of them is a belief in abandonment. Abandonment. Now one of the things with people pleasing and one of the reasons we become people pleasers is because we are afraid of being abandoned. We believe that we need to change the self in order to be abandoned. And when it comes to our vibration and becoming the highest vibrational version of us, almost every human on the planet has one of three limiting beliefs. They are that of the fear of abandonment, the belief I'm not worthy, and the belief that I can't trust. I need to control, I can't trust. Now this one is the belief of abandonment. Now, normally what happened is when we were kids, one of our parents or both of our parents abandoned us in some way. Maybe it was emotionally, maybe it was physically. My brother, my, my half brother, um, on my, um, my mom's side, we had the same mom. His dad is a complete douche and like, uh, you know, abandoned him when he was, a, when he was young. And it's like, he has to fight to have a relationship with him. That was a physical abandonment. Whereas there are times that many people have been through emotional abandonment where someone wasn't there for you. And then you start to have these things where you believe that you're not good enough. So you're trying to change yourself or you entertain people that then later on in life and relationships aren't emotionally there for you because you're used to somebody that you have to change and wiggle around for to get them to love you or to get them to like you. So the fear of abandonment is normally starts at a young age. And unless we overcome the fear of abandonment, we'll remain in a lower vibrational space. Fear of abandonment was probably why the old version of me working the nine to five job didn't take action because I was afraid with that of stepping into the unknown, caring what other people thought. If people were to judge me negatively, I could get abandoned. I'd be abandoned by other people and I would feel validated if they would just like me, but there's no guarantee there. You see the difference? So abandonment. Now here's the, here's the mind fuck of abandonment. Now what we do to get other people to like us, and to be different so that other people and to be yes man or whatever it is, yes woman, is we change ourselves for others, not realizing that we have abandoned ourselves to make other people happy. The original abandonment is you have abandoned yourself. And until you become aware of that belief, you will remain abandoning yourself to make others happy. So it's, it's drawing energy from within. This is something that we work, by the way, in the 21 day magnetic love challenge. It's one of the most powerful things I've ever done. 21 days in a row, I ended up going live for an hour a day. We worked on the fear of abandonment, worthiness, removing love blocks, attachment styles. It was completely transformative. If you went through the 21 day magnetic love challenge, can you comment, like this video, comment below and say, uh, say that you were in it or something like that and what you thought of it. So that people see what's potential with it. Um, and if you haven't joined it yet, you can join by hitting the button right meow, right below. So uh, that's something that we did. But the fear of abandonment is to stop abandoning the self. And that is a different vibrational version of you. Now, this, the next one is that of the fear or belief that I'm not enough. I'm not worthy. For a long time, I think I held myself back from making videos because I felt like I wasn't worthy. Who am I to be making YouTube videos? Who's going to listen to me? I don't have a coaching degree, a master's degree. I don't have this. I don't have that. I don't have even a bachelor's degree. I have none of this. I didn't feel worthy. And what I'm realizing now is it was just a belief that I looked at and then I started to realize that I'm worthy for just being me and you are worthy for being you. Something Bashar says a lot, someone I listen to, he talks about 
Can we agree that creation does not make mistakes? Can we agree that there's a, a bigger flow to this reality and that if you're here, you're here for a purpose? Can we agree that the grass is here, the trees are here, the animals are here, everything is here for a purpose? And that means that if everything's here for a purpose and if creation doesn't make mistakes, then you are here for a purpose. You have a purpose for being here and the world will not be the same without you. There's some reason that you are here and the world and the creation did not make a mistake by putting you here, by facilitating you being here. So if that's the case, then realize you are worthy simply because you exist. And a lot of times what happens is if we could agree to that, then what happens is we then see that if we're saying, well, okay, I agree that everything in reality has a purpose. Everything wasn't a mistake, but I am the one mistake. I am not worthy. Everything else is worthy but me. Am I significant? I am special. I am right that I am the victim. You see what I mean? It's significance. And it's letting go of that belief and realize you are worthy for just being you. Once I went to this live event that my friend did, I started getting all these ideas. I started feeling inspired. I'm like, I'm worthy to do this already. I already have the capability to do this. I just need to stop waiting. Stop telling myself the story that I'm not worthy. As I was having a vulnerable conversation with a friend the, the other day, I'm like, I'm like, wait, I'm worthy for just being me. I don't need to give it. I don't need to do anything. I'm just going to be me and be the authentic me. And I'm not afraid of that abandonment because I'm not going to abandon myself any longer. Imagine that this thing right here, you see this? Imagine that this represents validation, approval, and success. Now imagine I put it down on the floor and I roll it away. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. I'm chasing validation, approval, and success, not knowing that that validation, approval, and success already exists within me. And anything that I chase, Say I was chasing that thing around, I am saying that that does not already exist inside myself. So in a way, we're playing this cat and mouse game where almost like if you have a dog and you were to put it, like start chasing a dog, the dog thinks you're playing with it and guess what's gonna happen? The dog's gonna keep on running. It's just simply responding to the energy you're putting out. And in the same way, when we talk about validation, approval, and success, it's almost like when we chase it, we are implying that that validation, approval, and success isn't within us, and then people are more reluctant to actually give it to us. It's a crazy paradox, but it's almost like people can feel the desperation, or they can feel in that, that the person isn't, doesn't feel worthy already, so then they have more blocks and resistances towards giving that person validation, approval, and success. And I'll tell you right now, when I stopped chasing it, I just naturally had it. I started getting that which I craved for so long. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly why I did that, how I did that, and probably the biggest epiphany that I've had this year that has completely transformed my life, allowed me to feel 100% worthy, whole, and complete, and as a result, attract more of what I want in my life and having people really respond to me in this completely new way. I'm gonna show you how to stop chasing validation, approval, and success. Now, uh, okay, I'll be honest with you guys, you guys have probably heard me talk about this before. Uh, my first three years on YouTube, I think that what drove me the most was a feeling of significance. Now, okay, for part of this is like, okay, this is what I'm passionate about doing. I wanna add value to people. But on the other side of this, there was a desire for me to feel uh, valuable. Like the more value I add out into the world, the more valuable I am, the more people gonna love me. <laughs> And for years that drove me. And what I found is that after I started developing uh, an online audience, I started always thinking of like, what is gonna get the most views? What is gonna get the most like uh, validation from people? And the funny thing is that when I would have that frame, I know people could feel that there was that desperate energy and those videos wouldn't do as well. And not only that though, I've realized it's almost like when I got the YouTube play button Recently, we hit a, a million subscribers on YouTube. And when I got that, you know, I, I went to bed every single night visualizing for like two years getting that gold play button. That was like a symbol to me that, oh, you know, your goal was a million on YouTube and you finally got it. And I remember receiving it and almost feeling a little bit in a way shameful because I realized that significance drove me for so long. And Significance is like a dirty high. I even wrote it right here in a red marker just to emphasize the severity of it. <laughs> but you can see it, it says dirty, it's a dirty high. 
Validation, approval, and success, it's literally a dirty high. And the funny thing is, is a lot of people are chasing it. And the problem with chasing is when you're chasing validation, approval, or success, you're implying that it's some future reality that you're gonna get it, so it robs you of being happy in the present moment. And what I've learned is now that I've given up the chase for validation, approval, and success, and it's not what you think it is as well. Many of you may think that like becoming well-known on YouTube or on a TV show or something like that, and getting people that come up to you and they're like, oh, hey, I say, I know you from this or you know from that. You would think, oh, like that's gonna be the best feeling in the world. I remember when I first got on YouTube and I got to 100,000, got the, the silver play button. I remember thinking that like this fantasy in the mind though, when I go to the gym, people are gonna start recognizing me. <laughs> like they're just gonna start coming up to me. And I remember hitting 100,000, going to the gym and I'm like, <laughs> like looking around, like waiting for people to start like noticing. And, um, only until probably like the last like year, I'd say that it happens much more often just because obviously it's much more than, than that 100,000, but it's not what you think. You, we have all these fantasies in the mind of what it would be like. And um, by the time you, you get where the fantasy and the glamorization in the mind, you think it's gonna be, it's just natural and normal. When I, especially been in Sedona, like I see spirits, like because a lot of spiritual people go to Sedona, I meet people all the time that recognize me from YouTube videos. And I used to think that back in the day that's gonna be so like the most high, like, you know, real cool, but it was just a significance high that I was after, that I was looking for. And now it's just normal. I love meeting people, but at the same time, I've realized it's not what the mind projected it out to be. By the time you reach your goal, by the time you, um, whatever the goal is, whether it's driven by validation and approval or success or whatever, it will be natural for you. It's only in the identity right now that's putting it on a pedestal and giving it a lot of importance. But by the time it comes, it won't be that way the mind projects it to be. I say that from experience. Now, here's the thing. Now, I've done this before and I found. Now, imagine that you're chasing validation, approval, or success. You're saying, I want. It's just a little stick right there. It shows his, his, this shows that his feet are moving, okay? <laughs> and basically, it's just implying that these things are outside of us. And if they're outside of us, then we're not embodying them in the present moment. And I'll get to how you change these. How you change these is it's powerful. And it's actually very simple. But it's, it's understanding a couple concepts first of, uh, of, of how this works. Now, first off, fishing for compliments. I know, uh, I remember recently I got my hair different. You know, my hair was growing out and stuff. And I've been growing out for a while. I remember after getting it done. And just, I remember even going on Instagram Live and in a way, I could tell that I was fishing for compliments. I was fishing to see what people would say now that I have a new haircut. And I realized that when I was fishing for compliments and I was like looking for the compliments, I would not see them. <laughs> Even though some of them were there. But um, when I let go of it completely is when it started coming. And I had to become aware of the ego. You know, a lot of the, the chasing of validation, approval, and success I think is related to how we felt worthy or not worthy growing up. Did our parents not validate us or did we get in trouble for things or do we become people pleasers or parent pleasers? And if so, then we find that we externalize our own happiness and we don't feel good enough already. And, and I think part of me, you know, that was getting in there looking for the compliments, in a way what that does is when you're looking for people to give you something, it's manipulation, it's taking. Control equals manipulation, they resist. What happens is, I've realized this even in my own relationships, even in past love relationships, the more that I craved their validation, approval, them being a certain way, I thought, oh, this is just, I put it out there, that's what I want. Remember, if you want it, you, you're, you're resisting it and you're also putting out an energy that says you lack it and they are responding to your own energy field. So what happened is I would, is in a way, not even knowing it, trying to manipulate my girlfriends in the past. Trying to manipulate them to give me some type of love and approval and they could feel that subconsciously, they may not have been consciously aware of this, but they would feel that and then they'd be reluctant to give that validation, approval, support, whatever it is. Because why? People don't want to be manipulated. And if they feel some type of resistance, they put walls up or they block it out. And this I've noticed, here's, here's another example. 
I used to work at Barney's New York and Women's Shoes and before that I worked at Nordstrom's. I would greet on average probably 50 to 100 people a day. They're walking through department, I sell women's shoes, I'm wearing a suit, I'm like, hey, how are you? I'd say like, hi, welcome to Barney's New York. We have shoes galore, $1,200 each, it's a deal. And what would happen is if I was attached to the outcome or seeking their validation or seeking for them to say hi in a nice way back, it was resistant and a lot of times I wouldn't get best responses. But if I would say, hey, how you doing? And there was no hook at the end of it that was like, oh, do you like me? Oh, give me significance, make me feel approval and validated. If I let go of the outcome and I didn't care one way or the other whether they even responded to me, they would respond in such nice ways and they would like ask me how my day was going. It was crazy because otherwise I'm trying to manipulate. When I was selling women's shoes, it was like I wanted things to go a certain way. The more I'd control, the more resistance I'd feel and the more they would rebel against buying something, against being nice and validating or whatever it is, giving approval. That, one of the best things that I had growing up or that, you know, when I was younger was that sales commission job. They, customers would immediately give you feedback to your energy. The more I let go, the more that came in. That was the key. If I was greeting someone and not attached to the outcome, not trying to control, I'm okay if they respond, I'm okay if they don't respond, then guess what? It's a different response. So it's, they're gonna feel that, they're gonna feel that freedom and then you can allow them to actually give you what you want because they're making the choice to give it to you, not because you're trying to take it from them. It's a weird energy dynamic but it's one of the most powerful insights I've had this year. I no longer control uh, past or like, past relationships, current relationships, friendships. I don't try to control people to be a certain way. And by letting that go, it's like they just naturally do it. It is an amazing thing. Now, another thing with chasing validation, approval and success is a side effect of that is you end up being someone you're not with the hopes that someone's gonna like you. And you're not being yourself. But instead, if you just give yourself permission to be yourself, you're gonna find that people respond to you different, even if they don't agree with you. When I first got on YouTube, I was afraid of making like star seed videos and like really esoteric videos. And I would just keep myself in this little law of attraction box because that's what people knew me as. Once I let go of that and I gave myself permission to be myself, I polarized people. Not everyone likes me. I have a lot of energy. I talk about esoteric stuff that not everybody agrees with. And I totally accept that a lot of people are gonna not like me and a lot of people may like me. I'm okay either way, but that gives me more permission to just be myself, to be a flexible little noodle and do what I wanna do, even move my hands a lot, okay? Some people watch my videos and like, oh, this guy moves his hands a lot. And they'll comment and be like, why do you move your hands so much? Why do you talk so loud? Why are you yelling at the camera? Why do you look at it this way? Why do you do this way? I just do me. Some people may like it, some people may not like it, but I'm okay with that. In the, back in the day, I was attached to what you thought. Oh, please like me. And guess what? I created a mother crap load of resistance. But now I let go. And you probably feel, can't you feel it's different? I'm okay if you like me, I'm okay if you don't like me. I like you, um, but I'm, I'm not attached to one way or the other because I'm being most apologetically myself. The other thing is make it m m MF natural. I don't know what I can say on YouTube anymore. The other thing at the beginning of the year that happened, I'm now calling it he who must not be named. <laughs> like Voldemort because I'm a huge I'm a huge Harry Potter fan okay anyways make it natural okay if if we like when you get around like even my buddy Drew for example my buddy Drew the house together in Sedona amazing guy one of my best friends and he's super successful literally he owns a hundred million dollar company over a hundred million dollar company and I remember sometimes I'll be around him and I, I sometimes question like like my own sense of worthiness. And he's such a bold character that sometimes it, it makes me, f like I fall into a different frame. But what I've realized is letting go of the desire to be liked or being a people pleaser or being a nice guy. And as I've been more myself, there's almost, there's more respect there. It's, it's interesting how that works. And he's kind of, you know, he's helped me because he, he used to have a similar complex of, and he said that he's had to completely let that go. And he's so unapologetically himself. But it's always a good sign because sometimes I'll question my own worthiness being around such high level people, you know. I've met some pretty cool people now that I do what I do. Um, so anyways, yeah, now how do you like, how do you change this? 
Okay, what it, okay the, the, the solution is not to chase validation, love, and success. So what do you do instead? It's about becoming aware of the agreements and the reasons why you're not worthy and then just letting them go. In the past, we've made certain agreements. Many of us have the agreement that we need approval. So we're looking for approval from other people. Why? Because when we were kids, we needed approval from our parents. Oh, I'm gonna go do this. Is that okay, mom? I'm gonna go do this. Is that okay, dad? And then well, what happens is we're, we're always on this edge of like thinking to ourselves, is it okay? Am I allowed? If you let go of the need for approval by realizing you're an adult now. You're a big boy. Or a big girl. You could do whatever you want and you will reap the benefits or the pain of it, but it's your choice to decide. You don't need people's approval anymore the way that you used to when you were a kid. That's one agreement that will keep you chasing validation, approval, and success. The other one is comparison, comparing yourself to other people. And this is something that I did even when I'm on, you know, getting on YouTube, and when I, the more I compare myself, the more I felt um, you know, it, there's different levels to it because now that I'm more successful, I compare myself to other people that are already very successful and it just becomes a, there's always different levels to it. And when you get to, you know, I remember getting to 100,000 on YouTube, they get, oh, this could feel amazing. And then once you get there, the mind says, what about 200,000? And it always just goes up. You compare yourself differently. That's a trap though. And I'll tell you from experience, if you can instead bring it within yourself and enjoy the process. The more I make this about the process, the more I enjoy it. The more I enjoy it, the better results come. So make it more about the process rather than comparing yourself to other people. Compare yourself just to the best version of you. Like Michael Jordan's famous quote or whatever. I don't, com I don't compete with the person on the court, I compete with the myself. You know, it's a, it's a witty quote, but it's like, that's the key is becoming the best version of you and dedicating yourself to that. And then becoming aware of the childhood experiences and the reasons to why you're not worthy. That's the key. Why would you believe that you're not worthy? One way of looking at this that I've heard Bashar talk about before is think about it like this. The universe does not make mistakes. Everything in our reality has a purpose. The grass, the trees, and the oxygen, and the water, and this beautiful yin-yang thing, it all has a purpose. And that means that you have a purpose. And creation does not make mistakes. If you exist, you are worthy. That's it. You don't need other, any other reason. You don't exist if you get validation, if you get approval, if your mama or your dada says something about you. You exist, therefore you're worthy. That's it. Creation does not make mistakes. And if you think that you are not worthy, you are saying that everything in reality has a purpose. Everything in reality that exists is worthy but me. And that's significance. And that's um, inflating the ego. You are worthy because you exist, period, dot, end of story. Now in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you the belief system of abundance, understanding how to tap into your true abundance and how to let go of the belief system that you may have around scarcity, the belief system you may have around you not being able to create what you want in your life, the belief system you have that may say that there's not enough to go around and that the, there's maybe stories about abundance and about money that aren't actually serving you. So. For this, one thing I will say is that when you look at different patterns of successful people, you start to see some things. If you're studying, like one thing I like to do is read books from successful people and you can see how they think. You can see the uh, patterns they have, the habits they have, the things they do, and you know that that goes into their belief system. If you study and you change your own beliefs, you then change your reality. This is why when people say, people say when it comes to the law of attraction, they say, oh, thoughts create reality. Thoughts create reality. Well, it depends on the beliefs. You see, the beliefs, it all starts at belief. Belief, you, you have at the top. Belief, which is like the meaning you give things. A lot of your beliefs come from when you were a kid. You develop certain beliefs. You may have taken on the beliefs of your parents. You may have taken on the beliefs of, uh, of your environment, of what people told you. Maybe one time one thing happened and you think that that's now who you are and you don't even know it. I know for me, one time I went up to the snack shack and I didn't have enough money to get Sour Patch Kids or maybe it was Fruit Roll-Ups, I don't remember. But part of me was then like, oh, I don't have enough. 
This is embarrassing. I was embarrassed. I went to the front of the line. There was no one else. Like, everyone else was waiting. And they were like, you can't leave with anything. Does he not have money? Is he poor? And that's kind of, I felt unworthy. I felt like there was a little, a certain level of, um, of not enoughness there. And I really wanted something, you see. So belief, which is meaning, then generates a feeling, how we feel about money, which then comes the thoughts. When we're in a certain state of being, then we have certain thoughts. We normally think, oh, thoughts come and then feeling. Well, beliefs come, then feeling, then thought, and then come action. You take action equal to the thoughts you're having, the feelings you have, the beliefs you have, and you get results. All right? And then the funny thing is that this then feels this, and it's a cycle. Okay? So you have, you have belief, feeling, thought, action, results. Now, the belief system of abundance means that once you believe in what the story that you tell yourself about money then generates a certain feeling, thought, and action, how you feel, think, and do, feel, thought, and action, that then you will get a reality that is equal to that. And what people normally say, well, I'll just, think, I'll just change what I do. Well, sometimes that's powerful, but unless that changing what you do eventually changes your belief about who you are and what you're capable of, you see, that's when it's actually powerful. Now, the belief system of abundance is about being aware that what do you currently tell yourself about money? What is the story you have about money and what you can accomplish in your life? Because for a while, when I was in my spiritual awakening, I learned about the government and the financial systems and how money works and money this and money that. And then I, got, I, I developed a certain level of resistance about it. And when I developed that level of resistance, what ended up happening is I thought money was bad. I was like, well, money is not backed by gold. It's owned by corporations. Oh, I don't want to bet. I don't want money. I don't want to be bad. Yeah, I may have not been aware of that, but that's basically what I was saying energetically. So I had a belief system that money was bad. And many people will have a belief system that uh, money is hard to get. Money is hard to get. Or they'll have a, a belief system that money does You have to really compete for money. You have to have a competitive mind frame, mind state. So the thing that I want to share with you first off, your belief of abundance is first off understanding that what we're working on today is not even really a belief on abundance. It's more of letting go of a belief in scarcity because really, this is something I learned from Bashar, really there is only abundance. Do you see? There is only abundance. There is an abundance of anything that you focus on. So if you say, well, there's not enough money around, there's not enough money, what do you focus on? There's not enough money. Then you're getting abundance of not enough money. You say, oh, there's so much lack around, but guess what? You're getting an abundance of lack. You get what you focus on. So whatever, whatever you're focusing on, you're getting, whether you realize it or not. And the key is the belief system of abundance is a shift from focusing on what you don't want because it's been habitualized the pattern right now is to focus on why do they have that or I'm jealous of that or this or that but whatever it is there's a focus there if you change your focus you then change whether you're in a scarcity mindset or an abundant mindset but even deeper than just the focus is your belief now I believe this video is going to change your life the way you think about abundance and money here is the thing about money Money you think is outside of you. Money is a reflection of you and your own relationship with your energy. Say it one more time. You think that getting money, I'm chasing money, I'm chasing money, is the key to you becoming abundant. But you're chasing something that you think is outside of you, which is actually inside of you. Money is a symbol of how much you've tapped into your inner well your inner, inner well of abundance. And when you're doing what you're passionate about, it will normally be something that adds value to other people. The value you put out into the world is the exchange of the money that you get. That value depends upon the perception. There are people that get value out of some things that you would probably say there's no value there. But people do get value out of it. Therefore, it's their own perceptual value. People will pay money for cigarettes because they believe they are getting some value out of it. Even if that value is that they get two seconds of, of the nicotine that makes them feel a certain way. So it's all perceptual, but this is about your belief system. And I'm going to talk about the more specific belief system of abundance. But in general, this is the philosophy. 
The philosophy of abundance and money is understanding that it is energy exchange. Money is energy. When you make that shift within yourself of understanding this, you then switch the focus from how do I get the money over there? You then switch the focus to how do I tap into the energy here? Because when I tap into that and I find out how to give that value out into the world, then I will see the reflection of that. But everyone's externally focused. When money is an inner game and also an outer game, but it, is an, it starts as an inner game. And the belief system of abundance is so that is that of where people realize it is an inner game. I knew this as well because I worked a commission sales job for how many years? I mean like eight years. And that sales commission job, I would go on every single day with commission, it would start at zero. Started fresh every single day. And what I would then do is I would then see the different thought processes I have. I would see the different energy I have. Am I having fun? Am I serious? Do I have a goal? How am I acting towards that goal? What am I looking at? How am I relating to other people? How is this uh, energy dynamic? And I could then see what actually works. And the most abundant I've ever been was when I went in with what is called a creative mind state. Because you could say that's a competitive job, and it kind of was, you know? If somebody got a customer, one perspective is, and that customer buys a lot, it's like one perspective could be, oh, they got a really good customer. I wish I would have got that customer. I would have sold all those shoes and made a lot of money too on that one customer. But that's a competitive mind state. And if you have that competitive, competitive mindset, guess what that competition is saying? There's a scarcity out in the world, and because that person got the sale, now I can't get the sale. Now, now I, there's a limitation there. But you see, in a massive abundant mind state, the most abundant I've ever been when I went in, that would actually affirm my reality. I would reframe that. I wouldn't see that, oh, they got the customer now, I don't have the abundance. I'd say, wow, people today really seem to be in a good mood and they're buying. Maybe it's a certain conventions in town. Maybe something's happening. But when you get into a creative mind state, when you say there's an infinite amount of abundance in the world, and if I attune myself to that higher vibration, I will then perceive of it, it then is saying there is an abundance. You're then focused on abundance. You see? So the more competitive, Normally, the more scarcity that is involved, the more creative, the more collaborative, the more your energy expands, and the more then you allow abundance into your life. Now, remember, abundance and money is a reflection of the energy that you have connected within yourself with. The well of richness. You are rich. You are rich. And all you have to do is tap into that inner well by knowing there's some energy exchange that you can provide in the world that will then give you the reflection of money. But money in abundance is just a reflection of that inner connection you have with yourself. So ask yourself, what am I passionate about and what value do I add in the world? Could be some art that you create. Could be you're an amazing manager. Could be that you are uh, very passionate about Sports and by you being in sports, you're so passionate about it. You also inspire other people that you see This is about understanding you and your relationship with you now in general When you're in the belief of abundance massive abundance or massive success You are also connected to it seeing every single thing in your life as a form of opportunity If everything is opportunity if somebody were to offer you something you wouldn't say no no That'd be a, a, a sign of scarcity. And sometimes when you're in a low vibe state, you may not see that the solution's right in front of you because of what you're tuned to. But when you see things as opportunities when it comes to abundance, you will find that then it is, it's like you see opportunity everywhere. You see manifestation is not about attracting something over there to into here. Our brain can only pick up on a certain percentage. It's like, it's like, it is so small in comparison to how much energy is around us and we're picking up on what we're in vibrational resonance with. Now, when we change on the inside, we then change what we perceive of on the outside. Now, that thing that you think is over there, it's really about making that thing visible through vibrational resonance. Manifestation is not about attraction. It's about making the invisible visible through your vibration. That's the key. Making the invisible visible through vibrational resonance. Now, when you're in the belief system of abundance, notice that what this is about is this is about you being in a creative mind state and also unrooting, unrooting,
Your story about money. Your story about money that your parents may have told you. Your story about money about the way the world works. Your story about money and become aware of what that is. And what you'll find is that that was just set in a place when you were very young. May have been absorbed through your parents, through your environment. And then it was just on autopilot. It's just a story that we tell ourselves. We tell ourselves a story. It's like, that is the way money works. Oh my gosh, it's so hard to make money. I'm only capable of making 50000 a year. That's what my parents made. That's all I think I'm worthy of. And what happens is that reality reigns on autopilot. But then you become aware of that story. You go, wait, I just absorbed that story when I was younger. I just never identified that story, that belief, and therefore never decided to let it go. But what you do is you need to let it go, and then you can wire in a new belief, a new meaning. What does money mean to you? Money's a reflection. And having that real realization, say, okay, I don't need to focus out there, I can focus in here. Am I tapping into my own passion? Am I tapping into what I love? Because if I am, then I know that if that adds value in the marketplace, any product you see that does well, it adds some level of perceived value, then you can see how can I also add that into the world. That's what I focused on, and when I did that, I tapped into more abundance than I can even imagine. And it was by going with these principles. It's changing the focus. Changing the focus from the scarcity, from what you don't want, to what you do want. And then deciding and choosing that that's actually the way reality works. Once you change this one little belief about abundance, abundance is all around, abundance is everything. You can then start to ask yourself a new question. What am I focused on? Because if I focus on lack, I'm getting abundance of lack. If I focus on why things are wrong, I'm getting abundance of why things are wrong. If I'm focused on uh, why, why these things keep happening to me, some victim mentality, then guess what? You're gonna get an abundance of those situations. Because you're focused on it and the meaning. Belief is story, belief is meaning. Change the belief you have around abundance in general and understand that money is not an outer game, money is mainly an inner game. Money is an inner game and when you switch this shift within, you shift within like this, what you will find is then you begin to change the energy dynamics of this process. So, also understand the power of yes. When I'm in a state, I remember there are times I'd pick up a customer and it would be a customer that I wasn't 100% sure they were gonna buy. I wasn't sure and I was kinda like, am I missing out on other customers right now? I was looking for the next thing. Instead of saying 100% yes to the moment and, and, and treating every moment as if I chose it, I would then be looking for other things, my energy would be scattered and then it would continue a perpetuation of that scattered energy. But if I were to absorb every moment and to be present with the moment, I found that then I was like saying yes to the moment, that then there would just be better and better quality customers that would come through. It's like I put myself in a different state. So your state of being is important with this process, but say yes. If you say no and you assume because there's a blueprint of your mind of the way something has to work, then what you do is you actually close yourself in. But what you can become aware of is you can become aware of saying yes to more opportunities. Saying yes, knowing some things may lead you to some other thing. People that have a belief system of massive success have also turned, what do you call that? Turned, they've turned dark into light. There are so many people into light. So many people that are successful that have a belief system of massive abundance have had pain in the past. Some people have lost it all. Some people have had some very dark things happen that then they were able to turn into light. They were able to change the meaning. They were able to realize how do I relate to this? How can I go within myself, because my money is an inner game, abundance is an inner game. How can I go with myself and tap into my own resources to then have that in my re outer reality change? But sometimes bad stuff has to happen for you to get there. So change the meaning you've given to some of the things in your past because most successful people that have a belief system of massive abundance, they see opportunity in everything. They tell them the story that they are no longer a victim. They've taken that dark and they turn it into light. I'm no longer a victim. I am who I choose to be. It's not what happened to me, it's what I do with what happened. Things don't happen to me, things happen for me. So you see, this is the belief system of abundance and success. It's realizing this is 100% an inner game. Because the outer is a reflection of the inner. Abundance is exactly what you're getting right now, but are you aware of the abundance within yourself? 
Are you aware of your own abundance and the well of richness that exists inside of you? And are you doing what you're passionate about? Are you seeing how you can add value to other people? Are you following that? Are you saying yes more, more often? Are you in a creative mind state or competitive mind state? You see, there's an abundance all around us, but if you believe there's scarcity, then you will get an abundance of scarcity. There's an abundance of whatever you focus on. You focus on lack, you get an abundance of lack. Focus on scarcity, you get an abundance of scarcity. You focus on competition, you get an abundance of people that are competitive with you. Change your focus, direct your focus, you'll direct your life in a new way. But remember, you change your belief by changing the meaning you've given in the past to things. This video right here, this is one of the most powerful videos that I made and I highly recommend that you watch it because it'll help you with what you learned in this video. I'm gonna be sharing with you the top three reasons that things are not manifesting with the law of attraction and I'm gonna show you ways of turning that around.